Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex. And today I'm going to rank all 10 of the available transcended selector characters from best to worst with a full explanation of what makes them really good, what they're going to bring to your roster and why you should consider choosing them. Now, keep in mind, there's only 10 characters to select from Amadeus Cho down to Elsa Bloodstone. So your options can be a little bit limited and they won't include any character from this year. They won't include any premium characters from last year, like Sunbird and Blue Dragon and Mystique. And then there's a couple of other characters that were just left off the list as well for various unknown reasons like Silk and Bullseye. Anywho, jumping into the list, we're just going to get right into it here. There's really, there's not that many bad choices when it comes to the Transcendent Selector. So, you know, you can choose whoever you want technically. And of course, you should play the game the way you want to play it. But if you want to get the absolute most value and the most efficiency out of these Transcendent Selectors, you should use them on a character that you plan to play and also a character that you already own or will plan to buy the uniform for. Because besides War Tiger and Shadow Shell, and I guess Elsa, because her uniform, I think, costs gold now. Every other character is going to require you to purchase their uniform in order for them to perform at a high level. So that's something to note about Shadow Shell and War Tiger. They're on this list, but they're the only two who basically don't need a uniform. So no surprise here. Starting us off at number one, I think the general consensus is Moon Knight. Now, I will say that Moon Knight has lost some value recently because he just cannot keep up with the insane damage output of more recent transcended characters like moonstone like gambit like human torch surprisingly all blast types so yeah on top of the fact that against mephisto he has a type disadvantage so higher end players have been playing moon knight less and less he still holds it down very well for abx and squad battle he's not at all by any means a bad character and he's got a very proc friendly rotation once you learn, and I learned very late into my career, uh, but once you learn his rotation, he's very, very proc friendly. Like I said, because of ABX and his flexibility there, he can do burn, paralyze, and silence seasons. So he's very, very good to get you, you know, 600K for the card or a million or two million every single week that he is available as a combat hero. He's not the best character. Uh, you know, he's not the best transcendent character anymore. Once upon a time he was, but I do think he is the best on this list, the highest burst damage uh, and the most sort of, you know, overall uh, quality build to bring to your account. He doesn't have any support buffs. That's really the only thing he doesn't have. And I would say, I guess he's not as good for dispatch as other transcendent characters are, some of whom are on this list. And then the other, the one other thing I would say about him is the, the story fragment farming. He doesn't appear that often in the list of characters that doesn't really matter because it can change month to month but at least thus far observing it he hasn't appeared that many times but he's definitely worthy of your choice because he just hits like a truck and he's a strong combat hero male that we have a lot of we have a lot of combat hero males but we don't have a lot of strong ones and ones that are proc friendly and ones that can do end game content and one shotting thanos etc so he definitely deserves the the, the top spot Number two is where it starts to get tricky. From, from Moon Knight down, you could definitely make an argument for one or more of these characters. Now, I'm actually going to put Gwen, Spider-Gwen, second, primarily because of two reasons. One, she's a villain, and that's a much rarer tag these days, and especially speed villains are very, very rare. And I mentioned Bullseye. There's also Dr. Octopus on this list, but there's also Mystique. So as you can see, two out of the three other main speed villains are more premium and more difficult to get than spider gwen and dr octopus but spider gwen is leagues ahead of dr octopus she's got a great heal she's more proc friendly in my opinion and she does harder hitting damage and she can go and push much higher stages dr octopus is basically just his sixth skill his sixth skill is gorgeous but that's all he's got damage wise so spider gwen really is sort of the full package when it comes to a speed villain but on top of being a speed villain, she's still a female and she has the type advantage against Mephisto. So she does have a lot going for her in a lot of different ways. I haven't tested her to the full length and the full extent of her potential, but I do feel pretty confident and at ranking her at least two or three. That's why I said this, the second and third place rankings could probably be flip flopped depending on what you need. So if you need a speed villain, Spider Gwen is definitely your, your your best option here on this transcended list. And again, if you have a bunch of combat heroes or you don't care about ABX in that way and you don't really want Moon Knight, Spider Gwen's not that much further behind him and she's going to outperform him against Mephisto and against some other world bosses. So it's not a bad choice at all. But coming in at number three, and again, could definitely be your number two if you don't need a speed villain, is Medusa. Amazing character. And here's where we start to see 
team buffs. So she's going to give all universal allies 45% attack. She's going to give herself and all other Inhumans allies 45% increased damage to super villains. So now if you're trying to build an Inhumans team, if you really like Black Bolt or you're looking forward to Kamala Khan getting a uniform for her Marvel Disney Plus show or whatever, maybe you want to invest in Medusa now. And again, not a bad choice at all. You could skip Moon Knight, you could skip Spider Gwen, you could get Medusa. She can do Null, she can do Mephisto on lower stages. She has healing, she has accumulation, she's not hard to play. Harder to play with a proc, I would say, than either Moon Knight or, or Spider Gwen. So you might want to think about you know giving her a rage or making her a support character altogether and giving her an insight or something like that. But just keep in mind she's not as easy to play with a regular proc because she doesn't have really cancelable skills in that sense of the word. So this is the first sort of proc unfriendly character on the list, but she's very strong because she can support a whole bunch of characters. Like she can support all universals uh, in any game mode as a leader. And 45% is one of the best leaderships for universals. And then she can also support herself and other inhumans. And she's honestly not bad herself as a damage dealer. Uh, and she has some flexibility for ABX having both burn and paralysis. So Medusa is another really great pick, honestly. The quality of characters in the first three between Moon Knight, Spider-Gwen, and Medusa is very high, and they're all very near to the meta or sort of the top end of the meta. So can't really go wrong with any of these three choices. I would say even if you're choosing them for the next month or the month after that, like down the road, you're setting them up, I think it's still a good investment now because it's a free transcended selector. Coming in at number four, here's where we start to lose some value. So I do think there's a pretty distinct cutoff between third place and fourth place. I would not put fourth place in third place. No offense to Amadeus Cho. Now, Amadeus Cho is a great character. He can hit really hard. He has the increased crit damage uh, ability. So he, his crit can go over 200%, which means you can see some really, really big numbers. And he's got one of the coolest awakening skills because Wave comes in and drops all this water, these, these like tornado pillars of water and then Luna comes and freezes it all and then Cho comes and smashes it to bits really cool skill really you know pretty hard hitting damage dealer uh and he does have some sustainability and some defenses with the heal and with the immunity uh that has accumulation however the issue with Cho is he's got really long sort of awkward cooldown he's got 20 seconds here and then he's got 26 seconds on three so he is a little bit unorthodox he can work with a proc but you're going to have alternate rotations. You're not going to be able to do three, five, four every single rotation. You're going to have to alternate and do different ones. So he's going to have a higher learning curve than other characters. And he's not going to hit as hard. He doesn't hit quite as hard as Moon Knight. So he just he's just second place to Moon Knight in Combat Hero. And then he doesn't have the three abilities. He doesn't have the, the stun burn or the paralysis burn. He has paralysis there. But he doesn't have burn or um, silence, I believe to give you more flexibility for things like ABX. So he's basically just a weaker version or a, a lesser version of Moon Knight. And there's really nothing that he does better than Moon Knight to sort of make up for that, which is why he's number four on the list. Still a great character, a decent striker for um, Mephisto because he gives, as a Gamma character, he's gonna give you 10% all attack and 5% all resist, which equals 5% fire resist, which is not bad at all. And you might need some of the gamma characters for dispatch but yeah he just falls a little bit short of that that first tier of transcendent characters one through three coming in at number five i'm actually going to choose shadow shell now there are a couple of characters on this list that like further on that may be a little bit better than shadow shell but the impressive thing is shadow shell does all of this while maintaining the fact that she doesn't need a uniform to do it all these other characters you have to invest the thousand crystals with shadow shell you don't now, I would say if you like PvP and especially Alliance Conquest more than other game modes, then Shadow Shell might be your second or third best choice because she's very good for those game modes. She's also frequently used for story fragment farming uh, in the story mode for the All War because she is an elemental type. You're going to see her right... She's not there this month. Okay, hilarious. She's usually... She's here like every other month. You can see... There's other members of the um, Warriors of the Sky listed there. But yeah, she's often list listed because of the poison damage. And the poison damage makes her one of the most unique characters. Very few characters deal exclusively poison damage. So again, she's by no means a bad character. And she's a support type for the Warriors of the Sky. So really good character to get if you don't already have. And again, you'd be getting the character for free. So you don't have to feel bad about the investment. 
Coming in at number six, we have Dr. Octopus. Again, Dr. Octopus sort of suffers from the same thing that Amadeus Cho suffers from. He's just a worse version of Spider-Gwen. He's a male speed villain, but there's not much distinction between male and female speed villains. Uh, and he basically just doesn't do as much as Spider-Gwen because he's lacking uh, the heal. The heal is a big one that he's lacking, which really puts into question his survivability. And then he only has accumulation, I believe, on his awakening skill. So you will see a spike in his damage during his awakening. But then after it's gone, 12 seconds later, there's a big drop off for the next 18 seconds while you're waiting. He's got a pretty cute combo with three and five because of the damage proc that you can pass from his uniform. But yeah, he sort of he's been overtaken in the meta. And so he's not really going to hit nearly as hard as these characters. He's not used very much against uh, Mephisto. And he's basically just used until players build up. Uh, bullseye and other stronger speed villains for the same content who can just do more damage than dr octopus faster but he's he's not bad coming in at number seven we have red skull now red skull is interesting because he's another physical attacking character that deals energy oh no well he deals like so he deals physical damage and with one energy attack but then when you use cosmic skull and you get the buffs then most of his damage changes to energy so he's kind of like captain marvel in that way it's a little bit confusing He's also kind of like uh, Vision, where Vision, you know, has one type of attack, but then does another type of damage. Red Skull with his uniform is kind of the same way. Now, the pros of this character are that he has the Cosmic Cube ability, which is needed for some dispatch missions and is very rare. There's only two characters that have it, this Red Skull and Hydra Supreme Captain America. On top of the fact that he's always going to have a place, not at the top, but he's always going to have a place uh, in PvP talks because of his hero hunter passive he deals a hundred percent 120 percent excuse me more damage to heroes which means with the type advantage you could probably one shot luke cage now you got to be careful you don't want to take reflect damage because it's physical here but if you get the energy attack off but luke cage is basically just kissing kissing himself goodbye i haven't seen any counterplay of red skull versus luke cage but you can imagine the 120 percent and then you add on the type advantage of 50 to 60 percent you're talking almost 200% increased damage. It's pretty much lights out. He's honestly not bad for PvP. Again, not good enough to hang with the top tier, but probably the best or the second best character on this full list when it comes to PvP. In PvE, his damage really isn't there, so I wouldn't select him if you're looking for someone to clear Null or looking for someone to clear Mephisto or something like that. He really can't keep up. If we get a world boss legend in the future that is a hero rather than a villain, then we may be revisiting Red Skull, especially if we get a hero combat type world boss legend. So keep that in mind. His flexibility and his power is always there. Remember, Ghost Rider is so good because he has this same passive, except it's reversed and it's de dealing damage to villains. So he always has the potential to be a pseudo Ghost Rider if we ever get enough combat uh, hero boss type enemies. Coming in at number eight, we actually have Red Guardian. Now, Red Guardian is kind of interesting because if you swap over to this uniform here, he's actually going to be a super villain or not this uniform. The base look for the character is a villain. And then when you purchase this uniform, he's going to transform himself into a hero. On top of the fact that he has a very proc friendly rotation with three, five and four, he's a, you know, just a comfortable, fun character to play. And on top of that, he has hidden value because if you do buy the Black Widow Legendary Battle, you do have a quest that tells you to uh, own Tier 2 Red Guardian and then own his potential, Awaken. So if you don't even have Red Guardian and then you choose him from this Transcended Selector and you already have the Legendary Battle, the, the Extreme Legendary Battle for Black Widow purchased, you're automatically getting for free on top of the ticket, you're getting 200 Nornstones for free and then you're getting another level six advanced potential ticket the one they're giving out right now for the event for the this, this events down here yeah you can basically get another one so if you if you choose red guardian let's say you have the first five characters that i listed in my ranking and then you're like you know what i don't really care about dr octopus and red skull but i have the black widow legendary battle by selecting red guardian not only are you getting a new transcended transcended character to use with a 35 percent hp lead you're also getting another ticket that you can use to save 2,500, 2,400 bios, 10 million gold, and like whatever, 4,000 uh, black antimatter. So there's a lot of value there, and he's honestly not a bad character at all. Is he going to keep up with the characters at the beginning of the list, the, the Chos and the Moon Knights? No, but he's honestly not bad at all, and he's a pretty tanky dude 
uh, on top of it all. Coming in at number nine, we have War Tiger. Now, me not transcending War Tiger a year plus after he was released sort of tells you what you need to know. He's kind of the forgotten character of the Warriors of the Sky because he doesn't have insane damage and he also doesn't have a support buff for the Warriors of the Sky. He doesn't revive like Sunbird, he doesn't give you defense like uh, Shadow Shell, and he doesn't give you the leadership like Blue Dragon. So, yeah. If you're, if you're transcending him, you're doing it out of love for the character and the design, which is still really cool, or you're doing it to finish your Warriors of the Sky collection. But to be honest with you, he's not going to perform nearly as well as the other combat heroes on this list. And also, he is not used that much in fragment farming. He's actually used once this month, but he doesn't get featured that often compared to other characters. Last but not least, we have Elsa Bloodstone, the character who was transcended without a new uniform. Her uniform is from 2017, I think? A long time ago, a long, long, long time ago, before my voice changed, long time ago. I don't really have anything to say about Elsa. You could transcend her for the 30% leadership if you hate yourself and you don't want to get any other character, or you could transcend her because you're an Elsa Bloodstone simp, which is totally fine, or you could transcend her because there's literally no one else that you haven't transcended and it's a free transcendent ticket. Those are all good reasons to transcend Elsa. If you just want to transcend Elsa because you like her too, that's fine too. But you know what you're getting when you transcend Elsa. She really has very little value and really the only thing she can do is apply minus 70 all defense down against regular world bosses. You pair her up with White Fox lead or Dr. Voodoo lead and she can actually do some damage. She only has one ability. Oh, poor Elsa. Anyways, she can do some damage. Minus 70 is a lot. You put that with the debuff lead that goes up to minus 98 so it goes pretty high so yeah you have that but that's about it don't don't you know just don't have your expectations set too high if you're transcending elsa anyways hopefully this list has been helpful to you thank you so much for watching let me know what you think down below in the comments and i'll see you in the next one take care